I'm Patrick Bailey with IQist.com. Today is January 7th, 2020. 2020, sounds kind of cool. Uh, so today, since I've got my new Prusa Mini recently, I'm just going to go over real briefly downloading, installing, and using the Prusa slicer and getting the settings correctly, at least at the get-go for a Prusa Mini. Okay, so it's probably a good idea uh, if you're like me and you already have a Prusa, I already have a Prusa printer, but now you got a Prusa Mini, just to go read, uh, uh, remove, uninstall, and reinstall uh, the latest uh, Prusa slicer. So here's an easy way to get it. Go to prusa3d.com slash drivers. And if you scroll down the page a little bit, you'll see down here uh, where you can download the Prusa slicer 2.11. And so I'll just click on that and download it real quick. And we'll open it up. To install it, hit yes. Okay, English, select your language, mine's English. Uh, just hit next, I'll just take all the defaults. Create a desktop shortcut, yeah, install. Okay, there we go, hit next, finish. And I'll just uncheck boxes, I don't wanna open them up right now, and I'll hit finish. And over here I now have a link on my desktop, so I can just quickly open up the new Prusa slicer. And depending on where you're at, it may walk you through. So I actually went through some of my roaming data that I had, and so right now it assumes I have no preset configuration, so that's good. So you may, be, you may end up with this, in which case you hit next, and now you can see, you can start choosing what your presets you want. So in this case, just choose what printers you have. So I got the Prusa Mini with the 0.4 millimeter. That's the default. So I want that. Uh, but then also I want a Prusa Original i3 Mark III, not the S, in my case. So I'm going to choose the 0.4. Uh, and later on, I might come back and add some more. But that's all I need is just those two for myself right now. So hit Next. I don't need the SLA, SL1. Uh, hit Next. And... Cool, and then finish that. It should update itself and get ready. And so now over here, now I'm used to just using one 3D printer, the i3 Mark III, but now I've got two choices, which is gonna result in two different kinds of G-code files. So now over here, come over here, and I can go back to my original Prusa i3 Mark III, if I wanna print something out there. And you can see the, the interface changes slightly so I can actually see my print bed. Let me go to the mini. And there we are. So let's uh, slice something and do a little comparison here. So I have uh, my little carabiner that I use sometimes. And so we'll make this, we'll increase the size a little bit, make it 150. And by the way, I've been printing a lot of stuff out and it's been working great. I have no overall complaints. Um, not that I have any complaints. There's a few little things so far, but I'll probably get into another video. But so far, great. Uh, I want to beat on it more, uh, but right now, uh, everything's smooth sailing. So here I got this, print settings. I will change my perimeters to three. That's how I like to do it on this. Uh, one thing that they uh, have done, I guess their default height now is 0.15 quality. Hmm. I like to do 0.2 and do speed because I like to get mine done faster. Typically, it depends what your needs are. So just know that if you're like me and you do 0.2, you may have to choose that. So let's just slice it. And it looks pretty good. I'm not doing anything fancy here, just a typical infill, nothing much to go here. And export it. And we'll just stick it on the desktop for now. And also I'm curious now because I looked at it a little bit and I wanna show uh, the images now. So if you're familiar with what the Prusa i3 Mark III, and I'll probably do some videos on that. Um, the nice thing with the new LCD interface is you can actually, it'll actually pre-show you the image of your print. Uh, I was wondering what they were doing with that. My assumption was that they were, uh, as they sliced it, that they were making a thumbnail shot, screenshot in like some kind of format like JPEG or GIF or PNG and saving it in binary within the G code. That's like, that's actually what they were doing versus having the G code and having to render the try to render it on the fly. That's just too much computational power. Just, I don't see that ever happening on a small little box like that. Uh, but anyway, so there, that's working. So now what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go over here to the i3 Mark III, choose that one, and 
slice it again. And so it's going to be a, and then let me export it here, export it. And so now I've got both files on hopefully my desktop here. There we go. So we have the mini and this one. Oh, and it, oof, I switched it over and it changed it on me. When I switched it over, it went to 0.15 millimeters. So I need to go, it doesn't, it doesn't hold that when you go back and forth, I guess. So make, make note of that. Let me re-slice this because I'm also interested in the size of the file. Is there any much, to me, there shouldn't be a whole lot of difference except for a little bit of difference in the fact that there's an image file in there, but that should be small. Okay, let me save that off now. And then for convenience sake, uh, let's see. Let's see, let's see. Just so I can get a more accurate reading. I use Sigwin. I'm a geek, so don't worry about this. I'll explain what I'm doing. I just want to see the actual size of everything that's going on. So what I'm going to do is I can do an LS uh, G code. And we can see um, there's the 15 millimeter. I don't want to compare those, but here's the two. There's the mini and there's this one. And we can see 5.8 versus 5.9. And the mini is actually smaller. Uh, so there could be a lot of little nuances on there and how they adjust the code, but relatively they're the same, which is kind of what I would expect. So if anything, I expect the mini to be a little larger, but maybe they made some improvements and so maybe the, the coding's a little bit simpler. Mm, otherwise it should pretty much be the same file. Uh, so now let me go open them. So if I go open this up, here is, let's see which one is this. Da -da -da. That's the point one five millimeter. There we go. Here's okay. Here's the uh, Prusa i3 Mark III one, and this looks like typical G code. And if you're not familiar with G code, one thing you'll see here is the semicolons. At that, anything after that's a comment. It doesn't count for the pure G code. However, uh, because there's no no other place to hide special instructions, that's where they can hide special instructions. So now, if I open up the Prusa slicer, I mean the uh, mini version, you'll see there's something different here. We have the thumbnail, thumbnail begin, thumbnail end, thumbnail begin, and thumbnail end. And here you don't. So uh, they're not yet, and they might change. As the, we'll, we'll see what they have with more printers. The i3 Mark III does not need that thumbnail. If they put it in there, it's not going to hurt it, but it's not going to show anywhere. But it is over here. So that's kind of fun and neat. Now, uh, I was curious, to me, as a coding geek, I was guessing they were taking some kind of image file and, and converting it to base 64. Basically all that's doing is taking a bunch of, you know, zeros and one, converting them to text. And so you can see this right here. So I was wondering what was going on here. So let me um, figure this out. I found a couple of websites. Let me see if I can open them up. Well, for convenience sakes, I am going to, Let's see, ls.gcode. I'm curious on that code. And so I can copy it. Well, let me show you what you can do. Okay, so I'm just going to copy this right here. And let me go open up a couple of websites I found. Uh, I found this. Let me, let me clear this out. That was a test I was doing earlier. Found a couple of one. Codify. CodeBeautify.org, Bay64 image to image converter, and also Bay64 Guru converter decode image. So what you can do is you can take that code, paste it in here, but we have all these semicolons. That's not part of the actual text itself, so I'd actually have to delete it. So I can go in here, the small thumbnail, there's not much to it, so it's pretty easy to delete. But the bigger one, you probably want to do something different if you really or glutton for punishment to pull that all in. Okay, so there's that. So now I can take that generate image and we'll see I'm getting a, and here they've expanded so it looks really blurry and it looks really bad, but that is the a 16 by 16 or supposed to be. And that is our thumbnail or a thumbnail. And if I copy that, bring it over here, uh, this one will do the same thing. But the nice one about this is it'll actually tell you what image type it is. So I'll decode it. 
And now you'll see the image actually should be this small. It's very, very tiny, 16 by 16. And we can see that it's a PNG file. I was curious about that, what kind of format that was. It's a PNG. So now I want to get the bigger one just to prove it's working and also it looks a little nicer. So I did a little bit of tiny bit of coding. So what I can do is, oh, I deleted what I just did a couple minutes ago. You would think I'd remember. Okay, so what I can do is I can do, this is coding geeky stuff, but you'll see the results. So I can do that, point two mini uh, dash in to 50 probably. And so that's gonna grab like the first 260 lines of code so I can get 280 lines of code, oh, bigger. 330, not 330, 100. Okay, where do we stop here? 350. Okay, 349. So grab the first 350-ish lines of code. And what I want to do is I just want to quickly uh, get rid of all uh, the semicolons. And this is geekiness, but that's just taking those and re it's taking and saying, hey, at the beginning of the line, if you see a semicolon or space, replace it with nothing. So if I run that, you don't like me. Okay, so, oh, how about I do, how about I do it the right way? There we go. Boom, there we go. So now it's removed it all for convenience sake. Uh, and again, I'm using SigWinch. This is not a Windows typical thing. But if you're on a Mac and you've got Linux and different things, you can run something similar to this. So I'm just gonna go cut and paste this whole thing and we should see a bigger file size that looks better. Boom, 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 copy. Okay, so now if I do that, decode it, we'll see that's the file size that's gonna show up there and that's about what it is on that little tiny screen. I can put it all over here on this one too, which will just make it bigger, but still it's gonna be blurry because it's making the pixels bigger. But that's pretty cool. It's hiding all that image file. So uh, I just want to do that real quickly. So there, there you go. Simple way to slice. Go down, if you have a Prusa Mini, download the latest one. Uh, and it's kind of cool that it saves the image on there. So I have some more videos coming up on the Prusa Mini. Um, so far I'm liking it. So I just wanted to share that with you. I wanted to share, you know, get the Prusa slicer going. And also I was curious about that PNG file. So there's the PNG file within the G code. Hey, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, Hey, give it a thumbs down. Also, if you like what we're doing here, subscribe to the channel by clicking the subscribe button. And lastly, have a piece of info to share? Just post a comment.